at it again and we have another one with Larry Elder. Let's dive in. It is beyond dispute, right? Water is wet, sky is blue, Donald Trump is a card-carrying bona fide racist, right? <laughs> the President of the United States is a racist. His own words leave absolutely no doubt about that. What he is saying is not racially charged. It is flat out racist. And this, of course, makes his supporters racist, right? But for people who look like me, other minorities, women who have been, well, let's just leave this to race. <laughs> this president has said and done so many insensitive and bigoted and racist things that if you support for him, you, if you support him, people like me want to understand why you ignored so much. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> Mighty ironic coming from her. <laughs> the racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. But, but, but black unemployment, historical lows. I think the economy is doing absolutely great. And it's particularly reaching into populations that heretofore have had very- Before we dive deeper, it, I just thought of something. I mentioned in a video from yesterday that Trump maybe could benefit from toning down his words just a tad bit or choosing his words a bit more, just a tad more. And a lot of you were saying, you know, uh, you don't think he needs to change, um, you know, uh, a lot of his appeal is based on who he is. And I guess to clarify my statements, and I, I made a comment, you know, on that video, but I know I made it kind of late. I was trying to reply to a lot of you guys, but <laughs> I felt like I was just saying the same thing over and over. So it just is easier just to say it in an actual video. But you saw here in what I've been seeing in a lot of different videos and things, you know, the more and more I've checked out Trump and what he's actually what he's actually said is that the media twists his words a lot. And I think that is because once again, he's not somebody who bites their tongue. He tells it like it is. He says whatever he wants. And I agree with you guys. That is a lot of his appeal. He, he just keeps it real. But on the other hand, he also makes it, I don't want to say easy, but a lot easier for the media to twist his words. So I think if he just chose his words just a, just a tad bit more, not change who he is, he still should be Donald Trump. But if he chose his words just a tad bit more carefully so that when the media tried to twist it, they just look like complete idiots. I mean, they do anyway, but they completely look like idiots. Like the interview with um, Jordan Peterson and Kathy Newman. Like she just looked like a complete idiot that entire interview because whenever she would try to twist it, Jordan had already made it clear what exactly he meant. So even... As she like just twisted everything, everybody's looking at her like, yo, no, that's that's not that's not what he said. So if he not on the level of Jordan Peterson, but just clean things up just a little bit. And I just use Jordan Peterson as as a great example. And that interview was a fantastic example of kind of what I mean. Right. Um, let me know in the comment section. But as always, you know, like like I stated yesterday uh, when I was replying to you guys, I, I could totally be wrong about that. Y'all y'all let me know how you're feeling about it in the comment section, please. Very bad problems in terms of jobs. The economy is doing absolutely great. And it's particularly reaching into populations that heretofore have had very bad problems in terms of jobs, unemployment, and the opportunities that come with full employment. So African-American unemployment is at its lowest level. I give uh, President Trump, and I've said this before on Squawk Box, I give President a lot of credit for moving the economy in a positive direction that's benefiting a, a, a large number of Americans. Yeah, but he's still a racist. The problem here is that the president has unfortunately used language in the past uh, that will, we will have a lot of difficulty in, in erasing, uh, even with uh, an eraser, uh, with the, the words uh, 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 unemployment drop. Uh, because I, I think some harsh and painful words are, are just kind of hanging out here uh, across the country uh, as it relates to African-Americans and some but other you, minorities. Think, and what about the First Step Act? 
That's a law that allows prisoners who believe they have unfairly long sentences to have their sentences reviewed. And since President Trump signed that act, 1,000 people have benefited. 90% have been black men. They've had their sentences reduced an average of almost 70 months. The Senate tonight take- Wow. Didn't know about that policy. And once again, Trump had great policies. It was the media twisting his words though. So just imagine if he just cleaned that up just a smidge. What y'all thinking? 90 million, 120 million, 140 million votes. <laughs> Especially, especially with what's going on right now. I mean, because across the board, people are just tired of what is going on right now. In a weird way, Joe Biden is almost uniting the country again. <laughs> he separated us at first. <laughs> and now that things have just gone haywire, he's almost bringing us all back together in, in a weird way way with the amount of people jumping ship i mean it's crazy uh you guys tell me all the time you you talk to friends family you yourself you know uh we're, we're democrats and are now voting republican and i think this next election could be historic but only time will tell only time will tell um and then of course you know democrats do have time to uh fix things and get things on the right track I doubt they will because they haven't yet. And I'm still wondering why they haven't. It's a little weird, you know, like uh, you going to rig the system or what, what, what what's going on? <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on. In bipartisan action on something substantial, overwhelmingly passing a major prison reform bill. The First Step Act eases federal sentencing for nonviolent offenders, aims to reduce repeat offending and expands early release programs. Did he say bipartisan? Mr. President, thank you so much. It's almost hard for me to speak about this without being emotional. In the process of this, this has brought together friendships that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. I'm now texting buddies with Van Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Van White Lash Jones. How significant do you think this is? By the way, one of your partners in working on this yes. was Jared Kushner. Jared Kushner, whose, whose father went to prison and who, who fought mm -hmm. on this as hard as I this is history. This is history. Right now, you're witnessing history on the floor of the U.S. Senate. Mr. Perdue, for, it is a Mr. Christmas Perdue. miracle underway Hi. where, for the first time in a generation, Republicans and Democrats mm -hmm. are arm in arm tonight saying, we are sending Mr. too many people to prison. Mr. They're coming out bitter and not better. We want to make a tremendous difference. I want to mm -hmm. say uh, Hakeem Jeffries uh, on the left, Jared Kushner, and Donald Trump on the right have brought together a coalition like I've never seen. And what about Trump's? Wow. Gave props to Donald Trump. Whoa. Wow. Okay. Wasn't it Van Jones that was like crying when Donald Trump lost or something? Wasn't that Van Jones? I'm not even trying to be funny, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that was Van Jones, wasn't it? It's weird how that, if that was him, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive it was. It's weird how that happened. You went from being proud of Trump to crying because you were so happy that Trump lost. But anyway, that's the way that our government should be working, right? But instead, you have a bunch of kids that are that are running this country. And it's why when uh, I mentioned there should be like a cap on, um, you know, some some of our leaders net worth. And a lot of you guys mentioned, well, Trump wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to run. I guess what I meant while in office you know, if, if you're just generating enormous amounts of money, you have people like Nancy Pelosi that are worth like $115 million. That is just crazy. And she's not the only one. Uh, somebody else was worth like $250 million. The lowest out of the top 50 was like worth $10 million. I mean, th th these guys are making buku bucks. I mean, absolutely insanely rich, insanely rich. Um, and I, I just don't think that should be allowed. I don't know how we exactly we could stop it. I don't know if I necessarily, necessarily agree with term limits because when you have someone good, like if Nancy Pelosi was actually good at doing her job, I don't know if I would necessarily want her to be ushered out just because she ran out of time and put in somebody else who could possibly be absolutely terrible, you know, but I don't know. Y'all let me know. I feel like something something else could be done. Y'all let me know in the comment section. Music Modernization Act, something that, again, <clears throat> President Obama didn't even do. President Donald Trump today moved the music industry into the 21st century. He signed the Music Modernization Act, legalizing the landmark copyright reform for songwriters. The goal is to ensure songwriters receive 
pay for the products that they produce when you're listening to them on streaming services. Tennessee Senator Lamar Alexander championed that new law. He says the Music Modernization Act is the most important law in a generation to help make sure that our songwriters and singers all over America can keep working and making a decent living by ensuring they're paid when their songs are played. Is this a great day for songwriters? It is. And, and artists. And artists. And artists. Okay. Yeah, don't start give it out the artists. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't, don't cheat don't, those artists. Don't cheat us. Oh, who, who benefits the most from the side? I'm saying as far as... I think both. Both? Both. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I lean more to the the artists. Yeah. Because I'm a, I'm a performer, you know. But uh, it helps not just the writers, but the singers. And not just black, but black, white, all country, jazz, everything. So I'm very, I'm very impressed behind that. So it's a great thing what Trump is doing today. The president. It is, it is, it okay. is. And you know what? I told everybody, please, whatever your opinion or your decision, please, let's keep it signed. Let him sign it, please. Uh, look, today, today. Don't mess him up, please. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm really glad about all that. Right. Yeah. And then there is President Trump's support for school choice. The time has come to pass school choice for Americans' children. Look at old Nancy. Didn't even want to stand up and clap. You should be proud of that. You should be happy about that. Who is this? Who, who is this lady right here? Somebody let me know. Who's this lady? This lady in the purple. Who is that? She looks absolutely angry. She looks furious. She looks ready to yell at somebody. <laughs> but I don't understand. Okay, so if, if there's something I'm missing about school choice, please let me know in the comment section. There, there could totally be something I'm missing. I'm not the most well-versed on a lot of this stuff. But from everything that, that I've read and watched in the videos, I don't want... I don't see why school choice would be a bad thing. That should be a good thing, right? Y'all let me know in the comment section. Y'all let me know. So on the campaign trail, Trump didn't talk much about K-12 policy, but he did, when he did, he talked about school choice. And Betsy DeVos is a longtime school choice advocate. Well, I believe that the family, that parents are the primary educator for their child or their children. And, uh, and we have, in, to a large extent, uh, removed a lot of that ability <clears throat> to direct and control by forcing way too many families to uh, assign schools based on where they live. Now, choice in education is something that blacks and browns want. Guess who doesn't want it? White Dems, you know, who would never put their own kids in an urban school in a million years. Now, the proposal that I brought forth on education ends all private charter schools in this country. If I'm president, Betsy DeVos's whole notion from charter schools to this are gone. We're going we to have the same choice that you make for your kids because mm -hmm. I read that your children went to private schools. Not much, not much public schools. But we, we, even if it was public school, it probably was the best public school. I can't pack up and say I'm leaving Hyde Park and going to Germantown. That's really? our suburban area because I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. My daughter can't afford it. I understand. So we want to make what we got great, whether it's charter or traditional. And really, yes. public schools are charter in mm -hmm. where I come from. And we make parents know that they charter schools are public schools mm -hmm. too. So let me just say, I appreciate nothing more than how much you care about your children and your grandchildren and get them educated. And that's all I want to do. If I don't have the pieces right, then I'll go back and read it. Go back and read it, I'll please. Go back and, read it. and I promise you, I the promise next time you see me, if it's reading the way it's going to benefit well, our children. I'm not making promises. I'll go back and read it. I'll go read it. Sure well, just it. read it. That's okay. But it turns out that Senator Warren had a son in private school from the fifth grade on. <laughs> Lies about her son attending two different. Senator son Alex to a second. Hold on. Uh, I missed that. On. Elizabeth Warren sent her son Alex Warren to a second private school from 1992 to 94. Elizabeth Warren is forced to admit that her son did go to a private school after footage captures her. 
You lying son of a... Mm. It, th this is just absolutely disgusting. She sat there and lied to that woman's face. That woman is saying, hey, I just want my kids to go to the best school. I can't afford to go to the other side of town, you know, where the actual good school is. I just can't afford that. Neither can my daughter, all right? So I, I, I just want to be able to send my kids to a good school. I read that your kids went to a private school. No, my kids actually went to a public. You liar, you. You just lie straight to her face. Touch their hands and everything. Oh, no, I'm... I, I, I hear you. I'm going to go back. You didn't read a dang thing. Sheesh, Luis. This, this is this is absolutely terrible. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude or anything, but just watching that and then reading this, it's just disgusting. Because she seemed so sincere when she was in front of that lady. She seemed so sincere. And it was all a lie. Every single bit of it. That's just terrible. You got someone pouring their heart out to you and you just lie straight to their face. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> One of the nation's elite private schools. Warren Sun attended one of the, one of nation's uh, most elite private schools. But let's move on. What about illegal immigration? And what does that have to do with blacks? Now we must implement an immigration system that will allow our citizens to prosper for generations to come. Today, we are presenting a clear contrast. Democrats are proposing open borders, lower wages, and frankly, lawless chaos. We are proposing an... Sound like right now? I think so immigration plan that puts the jobs, wages, and safety of American workers first. A steady stream of people showing up at the building behind me. We're told 150 applicants in the first three hours of this job at fair with about 30 minutes left to go. Cook Foods has not said how many people they're looking to hire, but the folks that we spoke with said they're definitely ready to go to work. Uh, Cook is just one of several chicken processing companies to get raided by ICE agents last week with 680 workers detained for possible immigration violations. Peter Kirsten now is a friend I've known some 40 years. He's a wow. longtime member of the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. Professor Briggs testified before the Civil Rights Commission. We had a whole host of people testifying before the Civil Rights Commission. The one cohort, the one demographic in the United States of America most harmed, most palpably harmed by illegal immigration are black Americans and Politicians, open borders politicians know this. They know this because there have been numerous hearings before Congress on this. I've testified in a number of these hearings. George Borjas has testified in a number of these hearings. Uh, Stephen Camerata has testified, and we've presented all of this evidence, all of this data, that the pernicious effect of illegal immigration of open borders has had on black Americans in terms of uh, employment. Nearly one million fewer blacks work today because of the competition from illegal immigration than otherwise would be the case if we had a secure border. And it also depresses wage rates by a tune of $1,800 a year. George Borjas estimates that the depressive effects of illegal immigration on wages is anywhere from $99 billion to $118 billion annually, cumulatively, but it has the most significant effect on the black community. And did I mention Trump's expansion of so-called enterprise zones that will benefit the inner city? It's a big day. Yes, sir. Thank you. In a few moments, I will sign an executive order launching a new White House opportunity. This is a very big thing that Tim and I and everybody have been working on for a long time. And Revitalization Council. This council will coordinate efforts across the entire federal government to deliver jobs, investment, and growth to the communities that need it the most. And then there's the commutation of the sentence of Alice Johnson, given a long sentence <clears throat> for a nonviolent drug offense and the pardoning of Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion who was busted for a crime involving the transportation of a woman across state lines for purposes of sex. It was a BS charge just designed to nail him. And President Trump, once again, did something Obama did not do, and that is to pardon Jack Johnson. Wow. Wow. A great-grandmother gets a second chance at freedom after President Trump commutes her life sentence. Alice Marie Johnson served 21 years for a nonviolent first-time drug charge, but a serious charge of drug trafficking and money laundering. 
Her story caught the eye of Kim Kardashian West, who made a personal plea for the release to President Trump last week. Johnson shared an emotional reunion with her family after walking out of an Alabama prison yesterday. They are the folks who had been lobbying uh, for this pardon uh, for, for years now. Johnson was the first African-American heavyweight champ. And in what was seen by many as a racial injustice, Johnson was convicted of a crime back in 1913. That crime was transporting a, a white woman across state lines. Uh, he died in 1946. Senator John McCain, former Senate Majority Leader uh, Harry Reid, had also been pushing Johnson's case for years. But again, President Trump has... Uh, posthumously uh, pardon Jack Johnson. And did I mention that Trump has upspending on historically black colleges and universities by 14%? Education has the power to uplift. It has the power to transform, and perhaps most important, education has the power to create greater equality and justice in our lives. That's why today I'm thrilled to be signing an executive order to recognize the importance of historically black college and universities, very important. They have played such an important role in achieving progress for African Americans and in our nation's march for justice. HBCUs have been really pillars of the African American community for more than 150 years. Amazing job. Mm. And a grand and enduring symbol of America at its absolute best. And I congratulate you all. Finally, a word or two about President Trump's support for law enforcement. Now, what does it have to do with black and brown people living in the inner city? Well, consider the Ferguson effect. That is what happens when officers are falsely accused of racism, as happened after Ferguson. Cops pull back and crime went up. And guess who got disproportionately hurt by that crime? Black and brown people. Yep. Well, the Ferguson effect is the twin phenomenon of officers backing off of proactive policing and the resulting increase in crime. Last year, we had the largest one-year increase in homicide in nearly a half century. The vast majority of the victims of that homicide increase have been black. The reason for this crime increase, I believe, is that officers are living today under a false and dangerous narrative that says that they are shot through with systemic racism, that we're living through an epidemic of racially biased police shootings, and that the type of proactive policing that I think is responsible for a 20-year crime decline that this nation has enjoyed uh, is under attack as racially oppressive. Bottom line, whether you're talking about the First Step Act, the Music Modernization Act, the tremendous economy that's benefiting black people, the fact that Donald Trump is doing something about illegal immigration, the <laughs> fact that Donald Trump supports school choice, this man has got to be the worst racist ever. So, where's Donald Trump's wristband? I'm Larry Elder, and this has been The Larry Elder Show. <laughs> That, that speaks to something else. I got to start checking out some more comedy, man. I, I, I haven't checked out comedy with you guys in, in quite a while. Quite a while. But that was that was hilarious. White people that support black folks need a wristband. <laughs> She's got the wristband. Hey, yo, Chucky, let her through. Let her through. <laughs> that was hilarious. But anyway, um, the machine hates Trump. Doesn't want to acknowledge, you know, his accomplishments, what, what what he has done. And it's all because the media tries to twist his, well, not try. They successfully twisted his words. From what I've seen, maybe he has said some super, super terrible things. But as, um, I forgot who, who said that on Fox. It was, it was a Fox host. I don't, I don't remember. It was a video we were checking out. But she said, I'd take some mean tweets and $2 gas. <laughs> I'd take that right now any day of the week and twice on Sunday, okay? I'll take mean tweets and, and cheap gas any day of the week, 365, 24-7, please. But no, yeah, so let me know what, 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 what do you guys think about some of the questions that I asked during this video? I know there were quite a few questions, but I'm, I'm still learning. So uh, I know a, a, some of you guys have been, you know, following along with a lot of this stuff your entire lives. I definitely haven't. Just being totally honest, this is just me, you know, just kind of figuring things out, 
learning about all of the inner workings of a lot of this stuff. So yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this journey with me. If there are any other videos that you think I should be checking out, uh, you can leave them in the comment section or feel free to DM me on social media. My Instagram, my Twitter are both in the description box below. Uh, I also have a Truth Social account. It is just the real Doc Rich on Truth Social. Uh, so you can find me on there as well. Y'all let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Like, share, comment, and of course, hit that subscribe button before you go. And if you would like to support the channel more than you already have, my PayPal link is in the description box below. Peace and love. I'm out.